Hello, so today I'm going to be filming a video about my advice for finding a student house because it's coming up to that time of year. I feel like October, November is kind of when people usually start looking and like start putting offers down and stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to go through all my advice I can give you. Obviously, I'm a third year student now. I'm living in a student house. So yes, I'll give you my advice on how I got this house and things like that. Um, so yeah, please like and subscribe if you like this video and let's get started. <music> go through briefly where I've lived in my like three slash four years of uni so obviously first year I lived in halls on campus second year I actually lived in like a stu like a two-bedroom studio flat with my friend but that was through like university accommodation um in Green Park and then in my because I took time out of university so I really did second year I lived in halls again so this is my first like privately rented house I've ever lived in um so yeah that's basically where I'm at right now for my third year I'm living in a student house my first tip would be to find a solid group of friends who you can trust and who you know you want to live with. Um, so I know it's so hard to like tell, not hard, I guess maybe like if you may have made friends quite easily. Like I've been quite lucky in all my years of uni, I've made like friends quite easily in my halls. Um, but yeah, like I think it's very important to when you're thinking about finding a house to have people who you know you can trust that you don't mind living with that aren't too messy or noisy or whatever you know who are like okay with money because obviously they're going to be paying rent as well and it can impact you if they don't pay your rent kind of, if they don't pay their rent kind of thing um so yeah as i said like make sure you find a good like reliable group of people and like most student houses like go from like a, like three to six people you can get more or less but in bath anyway the average like sort of number of people in the house is usually about five or six um, but as I said, you can like go from like three people to living in a house of six or seven. Um, I actually live in a house of six at the moment. Um, I personally quite like it. As I said, it's quite nice to have like different people to talk to and things. And it's obviously because there's six of us, it is a bigger house overall than compared to most student houses in Bath, definitely. Um, like we have, quite, we have quite a big like kitchen diner, like a nice big living room, which I think is really nice. Um, so yeah, as I said, I would say make sure you find like a good solid group of people who you know are messy around and things. And the next one is to work out your budget, obviously. Everyone has completely different student loans and um, it like depends where you live as well. Bath is a very expensive place to live in. Um, you're looking at the average price of renting a house in Bath is between 500 and probably £560. Um, as I said, it can go higher or lower that, but I know most people who rent in Bath are paying around like 520 540 560 um, not including bills. So yeah, so if you're looking at being a university student in Bath, that is kind of the prices you'll be paying for rent. <laughs> um, so yeah, as I said, make sure everyone's on the same page as how much money they want to spend. Obviously, you might have to compromise a little bit. Um, we're quite lucky with this house. It's on the cheaper side of the rent, um, just because we actually live kind of far out of Bath. Like, we have two car parking spaces as well. But um, yeah, like, it, it takes a good, like, 45 minutes to walk into town. But the buses are really frequent. Um, they only take about 20 minutes, I'd say, to get into town. Um, but obviously if you want to live closer to town it'll be more expensive so it depends what you want um, but yeah I'll definitely work out your budget first and like see where you want to move to. The next one is to work out your location, how close do you want to be to your city, how close do you want to be to your university, um, what is your priority so as I said uh, we kind of all sat down and just like figured out what we wanted um, as I said I live with two boys who have cars or like they had cars back home so they wanted to bring their cars to Bath so we were like right we need to find places with like parking spaces um, and also we did want to be close to town obviously because like we do enjoy going out and things obviously not as much anymore um, but obviously like just for ease we wanted to be able to get into town obviously to get our food shop and that um, so yeah those are the kind of the main priorities and we need to be close to a bus stop and luckily we are very close to the bus stop here um, so yeah so to make sure you sit down like work out your budget work out what your priorities are in terms of location and then you can start booking viewings okay so the first thing I want to read down is just book lots and lots of viewings. As I said, um, your best bet for websites are Rightmove. Um, this is where I found this house from actually. So yeah, Rightmove. I know my, I think a lot of universities have a thing called student pad. So the university will put on houses who they like know are good landlords and you can find houses that way. There's also uni homes. Uh, you can look at estate agents in your, or letting agents in your local area. Um, but yeah, I'd always start with Rightmove and just put in like student houses. And as I said, I'm sure you'll find something even on Facebook as well. You can search that way. Yeah. So as, as I've written down, right move, uni homes, estate agents in your city, and Facebook marketplace slash Facebook groups. Um, because also we did have a couple of people drop out of this house, so we needed to find one other person to fill a room. And I found someone through a Facebook page. I think it's called like Bath, like housemate, flatmate finder, or something like that. 
Um, so yeah, like as I said, if you don't, if you need to find like one other person or two other people, like you can find houses that way through like private groups and things, which I think is really good. Um, so as I said, like if people do drop out or whatever, like try not to panic too much. You can like go through university pages or as I said, go through like a housing page and you'll find some people. Um, okay, so now I'm going to move on to viewings themselves. Um, to be honest, I've mentioned this before, but I have actually moved a house quite a lot like within my family. So I'm quite used to going to house viewing. So when we were looking at houses, I kind of knew what to look out for and things. Obviously, I know it's different like a student house compared to actually buying a house. But um, so first thing I've got written down is look for quality of rooms and social areas. As I said, some of the houses we looked at, some of the bedrooms are really, really small, um, which is obviously not ideal. Um, I mean, it's going to be a student house. It's not going to be like perfect. Um, but as I said, you need to just be wary. Make sure you look out for things like mould because you don't want that in your house, really. To, like, do you? Um, and also, it was quite important for us to have like a nice big kitchen because like we like to cook. And obviously, with six of us, like we wanted to have like a nice, comfortable place to like sit down and eat. Um, so yeah, some houses we just looked at, and we were like, yeah, it's really not worth the price. Um, and this one was actually one of the last ones we viewed, and we were like, we really want this house, so we really, really fought for it, and luckily we got it. Um, but yeah. Um, take photos if allowed. Um, you'll probably find that house viewings are going to be very, very quick or there's going to be lots of people looking around at the same time so you'll, you will be rushed around the house. Um, so if you are allowed to, please take photos because again, you can show people who haven't been able to make the viewings, obviously. We had, to, like, we had a lot of our viewings like during the like weekday so some people might have had lectures or whatever. Um, so yeah, if you can, take photos and videos so, again so you can show your housemates and or like, potential flatmates. Um, yeah, just so everyone knows what's kind of going on. Because also a lot of like letting agents, state agents, like the how the pictures they have of the house are usually very different to what they look like in real life. Um, yeah, as I said, like to be fair, the pictures of this place, like the kitchen, looks a lot smaller than it actually is. Um, so yeah, as I said, if you can take your own photos, make sure you do. Listen out for road and street noise. Um, I mean, it depends what kind of day or time of day you're viewing the house. But if you're viewing it, I'd say go try and get a viewing in the evening because then you can like see if you can hear people walking around at night, if you can hear car noises and things. Like we do live quite close to a main road, but luckily it's not that loud, like if your windows are shut. So, um, yeah, and also if you've got like alleyways along your house, like listen out if you can hear people walking late at night or whatever. But um, yeah, we're in quite a res residential area, so I don't really have any of those issues, but that's just something to look out for. Like as I said, if you wanna have get a good night's sleep and stuff like that. Again, I've got written down check for mold because some student houses have as they shouldn't really, but I know some people have really bad issues with mold, so look out for that. <laughs> also enough bathrooms, again, especially if you're living with like, a bigger group of people. Um, as I said, I'm living in a house of six, and most of the houses we looked at actually only had like two bathrooms, um, but this house has three, which is obviously ideal. Like, I don't, I've never really had to like, fight or wait for the bathroom for too long um so yeah as i said if you're living with like a bigger group of people make sure you like check how many bathrooms and things there are the next thing i wrote down is don't go for the first house you see um i know like you might just get a feeling it's the perfect house but i think there is definitely a lot of panic that comes with like finding a student house because you're just worried all the good ones are going to go sort of thing um as i said if you've booked a lot of viewings um but you do like the first house i'd say don't go for it straight away just like compare different houses compare different prices like their locations and things um so, so this is like one of the last ones we looked at and then we realized yeah this is the kind of house we want um and so yeah as i said just i'd say don't like panic and just like put an offer on a house because like you need to find a house like make sure you're getting like good quality for your money put have a group conversa conversation after each viewing as i said like a lot of your housemates might not be able to make viewing so if you have gone to viewing make sure you talk talk about it with your friends so everyone's on the same page um and then you can also make those decisions whether you want to like go ahead with putting a deposit down I've, after that i've written put an offer in as soon as you find a good house and don't be too picky as i said student houses on the whole they aren't like beautiful mansions like i think as long as you've got decent sized rooms good like facilities like bathrooms and kitchens um and like it's easy to get to university or the city like you're kind of covered in all bases so i think as long as like your house ticks of all those three boxes it, it should be good to go like i said the decor won't be like amazing um i mean this house is pretty just like it's pretty much like a plain canvas really as this room is very very white um but yeah, as i said like don't be too fussy with what the house actually looks like i think as long as it's got everything you need just like go for it and obviously of course if everyone else is comfortable paying for the house and like they like it as well um, but yeah, as soon as, as I, said, I think as, as soon as we saw this house the next day, we were like, right, we need to ring the estate agent up and just say we want this house <laughs> because we actually viewed it very close to Christmas as well, so we needed to get it sorted like before Christmas holidays. 
Um, but yeah, as I said, we were on it straight away and luckily we got the house, which was really good. Oh, I've also written about house listings. So a lot of student houses, they usually have like one, they usually put a lot of like listings up between like October, and November time. Um, so obviously they get a lot of viewings then, especially in my city, I go, I am a student in Bath, I'm a Bath to student, so obviously there's two universities, so houses go very, very quick, but, um, if you don't find a house before Christmas, like, don't panic, um, as I said, they usually release a lot more houses in, like, January time as well, um, so yeah, if you want to have, like, more choice, I would definitely say start looking in, like, October, November time if you can, but as I said, if you haven't got it sorted by Christmas, don't panic, I know a lot of people got their houses, like, after Christmas, like, in, like, February, March time, um, so yeah, it's definitely possible to get like a nice house in like February and March um, but after that you are kind of leaving it a little bit late but as I said you can go through to, like Facebook pages to see if like anyone's got like a spare room going or whatever and there probably will be someone on there because as I said I was literally advertising like July and I found someone so yeah as I said don't panic if things don't all go to plan and there is always a way around things um, so yeah good luck in finding a house um, I, I was going to talk about money in this video, but obviously it really depends on the city where you're studying, like how expensive deposits and that will be. Um, I'll say generally in Bath, I don't really care, mind saying, but um, you're you are looking at around a thousand pound for a deposit for a house. I know it sounds like ridiculous, um, but yeah, I think for this place anyway, we had to put a holding deposit down like a hundred quid each, um, and then like the second lot of deposit was like rent plus like admin fees, and admin fees are usually like two hundred, three hundred pounds, and like what are they doing with that money but anyway <laughs> um as i said yeah so make sure before you go to university or like before you put a deposit down make sure you have like some money saved because they do usually want that money quite quickly although we were quite lucky with this house we don't have to pay like, our second deposit until like um like may so as a, at least it, it sort of tied in with like student loan and stuff um so yeah i'd say just my overall tips would be just be organized make sure you've got enough money behind you um and yeah, good luck. As I said, make sure you're discussing with your friends what's going on as well with each house. And as I said, you kind of get a feeling when you look around house, like if it's the right one or not. Um, we did put an offer in another house before this one, but it didn't go through for whatever reason. Um, but as I said, this was like one of the last ones we booked and luckily we got it. So as I said, everything happens for a reason. But yes, good luck with your house hunting. Um, if you've got any other questions about deposits or like more of the money side of things, let me know. I can always film a separate video or just answer your questions in the comments. And yes, please like and subscribe if you like this video. And there's lots of other university content on this channel if you are interested. Um, but yeah, I will see you soon. Bye.